bag tax when you go buy groceries uh, or gas. There isn't a lifestyle that doesn't include a DC tax. And I would consider raising income taxes <coughs> only if they repeal that nickel and dime tax about a lifestyle because the income tax already includes your lifestyle. So we're, we're going to have to raise funds, but they have found $240 million from somewhere. Just go on. Once again, I'm a Democrat, and I believe in progressive taxation. Um, I would make permanent the recent increase to 8.95%, and I would add two additional brackets at $500,000 and more and a million dollars and more. Those who have more should pay more. We don't balance budgets on the backs of poor people like the way we did on that last budget fight. We closed a $322 billion gap, two-thirds of which was cuts to human services. I would absolutely support a progressive taxation system. Ms. Bowser. Thank you. Yes, I would support an increase in uh, the tax because the District of Columbia is less progressive in its tax structure than the federal government. The poor people making $15,000, 20000 or less, are taxed at a higher rate than people making 115000 So I would support that and looking at other issues as well, make getting clawback measures when we give subsidies to corporations that don't <coughs> do what they say they're going to do and make putting in um, – putting in control so that we have some economic benefit about with the tax abatements that we give out every year. Thank you. Now we're going to switch gears a little bit. This one is going to be a two-minute answer question. So, um, again, listen carefully. I'll, uh, I will repeat questions once, but only once. Um, what is your opinion of the proposed base <coughs> reuse plan for the Walter Reed campus. How does it fit with your overall vision for the de development of Georgia Avenue? The reuse plan as it stands right now has some positives and it has some things that I would like to be changed. The positives are the embassies. The embassies that will be built on the 16th Street corridor will improve and increase property values along that stretch. However, on the Georgia Avenue side, the community has voiced concerns and we're looking to have mixed use, not only a, a grocery store that can be one of the finest in the city, but also a place that could also have you know, luxury apartments or condos, you know, certain types of a development that the community can be proud of. So it's headed in the right direction. And as long as the community continues to have a voice, the development on, on that particular corridor will continue to excel and, and, and improve. But right now, the way it currently stands, we definitely need a more progressive development on Georgia Avenue. Ms. Jones. Walter Reed, uh, the Brack was a very important economic uh, development on Georgia Avenue. There are plenty of businesses that are, are in trouble on Georgia Avenue because Walter Reed is closed. I hope for mixed-use development, something that would anchor that at part of the uh, Georgia Avenue. Also, we <coughs> have to think about seniors. Also, a senior living area on there would be excellent because it is already surrounded by a gate, and it would there there is limited um, ideas about senior living. I think there's one or two developments that I know of in the last five years. So having having a plan is important. I do believe there is a meeting tomorrow evening. I, I like the fact that the community is involved in it. I also think there ought to be schools, recreation, multi uh, multi use retail. On, on the ground floor and um, living workforce development, uh, living above the retail. So it is going to be important, and whatever it is should anchor that area and to make sure that the it's conducive to whatever is there and will enhance it. This is our opportunity, and I don't think we should mess it up. Sure. Walter Reed is our town center. It's the heart of Ward 4. It should be the crown jewel of Ward 4. Uh, 
Um, it should have all the things that Ms. Jones mentioned. These are great ideas. It should have all this mixed use. It should serve the neighborhood. It should not serve those who are coming from outside the ward. What troubles me is that we have a focus on big box stores. Where are our leaders go to find retailers for Walter Reed? They went to Las Vegas. What did Ms. Bowser say a few days ago? She's very excited about a Target and a Best Buy going in. Those are great stores. But what about the mom and pop bakery? What about the flower shop? What about the bookstore? What about the cultural institutions? You don't have to go to Vegas to find those things. You can live right here in Ward 4. The other issue I'm troubled by is the transition, how long it's going to take. We can't get in there for the 15 to 18 months. Now, some of that is the federal government has to do with military, but we have not been fighting for a transition plan for Walter Reed. The stores you're talking about, Ms. Jones, along Georgia Avenue, have gone out of business. There's been no help for them, none whatsoever. And there's space there right now that we could be using. There's acres of kitchen space in Walter Reed that we all know about that food startups and entrepreneurs and restaurants could be using to job training. In. There's green space we could be using for community gardens, for schools, for kids to grow vegetables. Let's get in there now. Why isn't our council member fighting to, to shorten that transition period? Because right now, it's just this giant space, this giant hole in the heart of Ward 4. So let's make sure that we have our town center. Thank you. Ms. Bowser. Thank you. I believe we need to balance the uh, concerns of the residents who live in the immediate area around, Ward 4, uh, around the Walter Reed site in terms of preserving their quality of life, but balance that against uh, promoting uh, small homegrown businesses that provide living wage jobs so that people can live where they work. Here in Ward 4, we have an unemployment rate of 8.3%. So we have to focus on job creation. We, not only is it good to have restaurants, and I know a lot of people have talked about that, but we have to focus on what can establish jobs, like fighting for a real apprenticeship training center um, maybe on that site so that people can uh, train to be an elevator constructor so that Metro won't have to get elevator constructors from Canada. They can get skilled craftspeople from the District of Columbia. So my fight is to, it's uh, good to have some businesses, but I'm not sure, you know, Best Buy and, and the same businesses we have a mile down the road on 14th Street, we have to focus on upgrading uh, small businesses and making them prosper. And that, I think, will make uh, Ward 4 shine. Early. Let me say that I have a military affinity for Walter Reed. My father served 22 years in the <clears throat> Navy. I'm a green space type of person. Let's take it from a point of dollars and cents since I'm coming from my county viewpoint. Currently, the FBI is looking for another relocation from the downtown site. There's a possibility they may move there. That would be good because right now, Ward 4 is experiencing a crime wave right now. And those policemen will be traveling, making sure that those folks who work there at the FBI, if they relocate there, to the metro. But this is what I want to do. DC needs money, they cash strap. Right now, Bethesda Naval Hospital, the new one is crowded. The one in Virginia is also crowded. We still got our boys coming back and girls coming back. And they need a hospital. Why not keep Walter Reed open for at least five or six years? Let's educate and bring in the UDC nursing program there. Jobs as far as orderlies, doctors, five years. We charge the federal government 1500 a month a bit. Hold on to it for five years, and let's think about what we're going to do with it afterwards. And that's what I think we should do for my county. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, now let's move on to the, uh, uh, I think we have time for one more question. This will be a one minute uh, response question. Um, the likelihood of Walmart opening some of its first stores in Ward 4 is being greeted with enthusiasm by some and dismay by others. Please explain your position on the issue and what can and should the council do? We will start with you, Ms. Jones. Um, I am uh, an ANC commissioner on 4B, uh, which Walmart at Georgia, Missouri is currently located, as well as the one in, on uh, Ridge Road. And um, no, and, and you know, just no. And I don't mean no Walmart. I mean, just you want Walmart. I thought four was too many. We have uh, 
we only need two. And I don't, I don't mind where the two are, but we only need two because we want to entice other businesses to come and locate in the district. We do not need a vast wasteland across the city with six Walmarts. And so Georgia Avenue is really not good, but at Briggs Road, it makes more sense. You know, you have people coming in and out of Maryland, and just on the Maryland side, you have a uh, Kmart. So, I'm, I, I, you know, we have to limit, and when you ask them about the plans, there is none. They're just throwing things at a wall and hope something sticks. I don't think that's a good plan. Mr. Schoolman. If I was on the council, I would have voted to stop or, or attempt to stop the Walmart from coming in. But it is a buy right development, and it's coming to Georgia, Missouri. But here's where I, I would fight it. And this is my experience down in the baseball stadium, where they made all kinds of promises to the community, none of which were kept. And Walmart's making all kinds of promises right now, none of which they will keep, unless we have someone who's going to fight them on a real community benefits agreement, not their press release that they, that they put out that has completely unenforceable. We have to fight for real jobs, not poverty jobs, jobs that pay a living wage, that have union, union benefits, that have health benefits, that have equity audits to make sure that there's no female discrimination at Walmart, which has a long history of discriminating against women employees. So I'm going to be there and make sure that we hold them accountable. We hold their feet to the fire. Because no 